This episode is sponsored by Flawless, a Texas-based natural skincare line for all skin types started by a friend of mine from undergrad, Bianca. After we graduated from university, Bianca had broken out with cystic acne, dry, peeling, irritated skin, and had scabs and scars all over her face. She tried different skincare methods and skincare lines for about three and a half years with no success. That's when she remembered the idea of Flawless that God gave her almost four years prior, and she started making her own natural soaps. The name Flawless came from the Bible verse Song of Solomon, chapter 4, verse 7, which says, You are altogether beautiful, my love. There is no flaw in you. I started using Flawless because I wanted to clear my face as I saw it had for Bianca. And let me tell you, this has done the trick. What I like about these products is that everything is handcrafted. Her soaps are made in small batches to ensure the highest level of quality and they're free of parabens, phthalates, and sodium lauryl sulfate. They're also slowly cured using the traditional cold process method and they use oils, milks, purees, and moisturizing butters to make your skin look and feel flawless. If you're looking for skincare products that are made with care using ingredients you trust, Go to www.flawlessnaturalsoaps.com and use my referral code FIRSTBASO to get 10% off all purchases over $10. Choose Flawless and be reminded just how beautiful you are in the eyes of God. You're listening to First Basso. Welcome to First Basso, a show where we learn together how to take that first basso toward becoming the best versions of ourselves. My name is Candice Orushala, and today's special guest is the owner and founder of Kingdom Power Living, a faith-based wellness business that helps Christian women lose weight by incorporating their faith and inviting God in on the journey. She is an author, a speaker, and a fitness coach, and she just has a new book out called Soaring in Your Faith and Fitness, and she currently has a challenge going called Hashtag 2021 Pounds to help 200 Christian women who want to lose 10 or more pounds each for a collective of 2021 pounds this year. So without further ado, please welcome Coach April Griffith. Hey, how are you doing? It's nice to meet you. Yay. Thank you so much, Candice. Thank you for allowing me to be on your platform. And thank you for just, yeah, this day. It's an amazing day. I'm doing great. And yourself? I'm good. It's Easter Sunday. So praise him anyhow. Hello. He is risen. He is risen. risen. Yes. Yes. The best part. Best part of this is having a risen savior. So praise God. I'm so glad we get to record today of all days and just kind of get to hear. I would love to hear from you and hear your story. I'm already excited for the fact that you're teaming up faith and fitness because I'm super passionate about that. So I'm really excited to hear your story and hear more about you. But why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and who you are? I know I just read like a little bio of you, but just... From you, what, how would you explain yourself to my audience? Yeah, so again, thanks for being here. And I'm so glad that you mentioned that too, that it's Resurrection Sunday, because I didn't realize it before, but when I did realize it, I was like, oh man, Lord, that is so cool that you know I get to be on this platform and I get to you know exalt you and just like glorify you on Resurrection Sunday. So that is like super amazing. I was like, yeah, let's do something like really, really amazing and like supernatural. So I'm so happy to be here with you today. Um, Again, Candice, thank you so much on this Resurrection Sunday. Um, So a little bit about me, like, man, wow, where do um, I start? I'll probably give you the the version of I just, I'm a, I'm a new entrepreneur, right? So I just launched into the deep 
COVID kind of helped me do that, but it wasn't quite COVID. So um, I spent a number of years in, um, in higher education. I worked at a university at a business school, and then I spent a number of years in corporate America. I was one of the largest financial institutions in the world. And I just struggled each and every time, like really trying to get promoted, right? Get promoted, get promoted, get promoted. Every time it was time to go up to a new level, it just seemed to be some type of resistance. And so I was just like, man, Lord, like what is going on there? And um, just after like seeking and seeking and seeking God, um, he really put on my heart to go and get um, certified as a, um, a fitness coach. And just doing some some talking to some friends and just knowing like how frustrated I was. And as I began to desire to be more healthy, even in my own body, and then we'll get to a story probably that prompted that um, a little bit later, but I desired to get healthy in my own body. And I started looking around the body of Christ and saw like how we were not um, living our healthiest, most whole lives, even though we were standing for healing in a lot of ways, even though we new scriptures and we knew what the bible said we weren't actually doing it so i'm frustrated in corporate america i go and i become a certified fitness coach and i didn't do anything with it i continue to struggle in um, corporate america just really trying to feel like i was excelling and i heard god speak to me and say if i told you if you say no not just if i told you if you're saying this, April, if you say that I told you to go and get this certification, why are you not doing anything with it? Mm. And I was like, whoa, yeah, that's a good question, God. Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> I did not have an answer, but it kind of struck something in me like um, to do something with the things that God is giving you to do. And it reminds me of even what I was reading about earlier today, you know, we know the the parable of the talents and even, um, you know, when Jesus gave the other parable, which is kind of similar um, about, you know, being faithful over little and, you know, making us, us ruler over much. And so I was like, I don't know. And then fast forward a little bit, a friend of mine, her condo association hired me on to do some summer classes, to do a, um, a boot camp over the summer. And that that was my first time really doing something in the area. And I was like, Lord, I think this is really, really um, something I enjoy. And I think this is something that you want me to do. And a little bit before that, I had kind of gotten bitten by this entrepreneurship bug. And I took this entrepreneurship course and again, didn't do much with it. But I mean, I wasn't really stewarding what God had given me. And so fast forward after I started teaching the boot camp classes over um, the summer, I enjoyed doing it. I was like, Lord, I really want to help people get healthy. I really want to help people get whole, even from the inside out, um, because it's not just about um, like being slim or skinny or like whatever your, your term is. It really is about transforming from the inside out. And that's the reason why Kingdom Power Living exists. And that's why I even hate to call it a tagline that we um, are changing lives one simple at a time because it's really about a transformation and not just um, about losing weight. So fast forward in this like whole corporate environment, still very frustrated, saying that I wanted to leave. I was going to work on a plan to get out. Never worked on that plan, just mad and angry that I'm there. And then right before COVID hit, my position was eliminated. And I was like, okay, God, I guess this is what you were telling me to do. I guess it's time. Huh? It is finally time. But I didn't know like the next month that COVID was going to hit and things were going to shut down. So being a trainer, I work with people in person, right? Um, being a speaker, I go on stages and I speak to people. And I was working on this whole tour, this church tour, going around to different churches and really like inviting people um, to invite God in on the health and wellness journey. And it just all got shut down. Like my speaking um, gigs that I had, you know, it just got shut down because of COVID. And so I had to pivot. So um, I know that was a long answer to your question, a little bit about me, but um, that's kind of how I came about to birth Kingdom Power Living. And that's really the story that got me to really, really desiring to help God's people live a healthy and whole life. 
I love this. I am, I kid you not, I am so passionate about this topic because it's something I'm trying to transform my thinking about when it comes to health and fitness and how this whole, the fitness industry is, the way that the fitness industry is set up, it's very new in the context of the history of the world. Like Jesus wasn't out there trying to run marathons. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's just not something that we were doing. It was in this normal day-to-day thing. They walked everywhere they wow. went. I mean, they were like in the fields, they were working, they were active, they were mobile and they live much longer, obviously. But it's like, it was it was a norm. It was like almost kind of like the retirement thing. Like who thinks about a retirement plan? And because it's like, no, you work until you can't move no more or something, right? Exactly, exactly. And so it's just, it's been very interesting trying to balance that out with faith and how it's not about getting abs or it's not about being a size four or it's not, you know, all those things that the industry pumps out at you, but it's, are you your, the best version of yourself, whatever that looks like to you and physical fitness is just a piece of that journey of being your best whole self. So I love that you're doing this. And I love that the Lord prepared you a little bit ahead of COVID to make this shift. Cause he's like, I see it's coming. She don't see it coming. Let me get her situated in the idea of what's right. about to happen. <laughs> and then we're going to shut it all down. Okay. <laughs> like, that's what he okay. did. That is what he okay. did. So then what, what for you was your first fossil or your first step moment in that arena or in in your story what for you is that so um I guess if we talk about the wellness journey my my first step into I I won't say necessarily into um kind of like the the arena of the health and wellness but the first step and when I realized that the first thing that occurred I guess I should say where I knew that I, there was something that I needed to fix was actually a 12 year old me. And we were, I was hanging out with friends, 12, 13 year olds, what, you know, preteens, teens, you know, do hanging out at a friend's house. And there was a little boy there, we'll call him James, let's just call him James, that I like. Hey James, And <laughs> shout out to James. <laughs> uh, yeah, cause if James could see me now, no, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> hey. Hey, look at her. The girl. Right. We're going to we shout him out in a different way. Missed it but. out, James. <laughs> <laughs> so a young 12-year-old April like James, but James and I know that. And in the midst of doing what, you know, preteens or like young people do, James happened to call a young 12-year-old April big, right? And yeah, so, I mean, we ain't quite shouting about now, but we've we forgiven them. We have forgiven them. So we've moved on, right? We, we've moved, yeah, right. moved on. But, uh, but I carried that with me, my teen years, I carried that with me a lot of my adult years thinking that I was fat because of something that someone said to me, even at such a young age. And it hindered me in so many ways. I mean, there were certain clothes that I wouldn't wear. There were certain Um, activities that I wouldn't participate in because I thought I was big and it held me back a lot and it wasn't until really after I gave my life to Christ and I began to learn who my identity was in Christ that I began to shed the baggage of all of the other junk that you know happened when I was just 12 years old and even you know other things like that and so that's why you bring up like the whole the, the fitness industry. I mean, it's a billion dollar industry. I mean, I get that. And I'm not hating on Jenny Craig or Weight Watchers, like Beach by like none of them. But what I experienced, I know that other women have experienced and even more. And so that's why when you mentioned the piece about like shifting your mind, that's so necessary for us to do. That's the one thing that God did not do for us when we became saved. We have to renew our minds. And so that's what I incorporate in my programs to shift. We have to like renew our minds. We have to shift our mindsets. We have to um, see the, the the woman of God that God sees in us. And that's what's really going to help us 
um, towards our goals. And that's why even in my book, it's like inviting God in on a journey. And it's like not doing this thing without him, because we have to realize who we are in him to better take care of ourselves and realize really the value and the worth that we have and, and how he sees us. And so that mindset and that identity piece, I had to go on that journey um, to really kind of undo the things that, you know, the world society, Lou James had, you know, said to me that I just carry around for, for so long and so many other women I know, and even more traumatic things than that, that we have to break loose of those things because they've been holding us back even in our health and wellness in ways that we may or may not understand. Because I didn't think, I, I didn't think God had to reveal that to me, that that was some of the baggage that I was hanging on to. I didn't think that when I was in high school and I wanted to play volleyball, but I held myself back because I was like, wait a minute, they wear those little short buns on uh -uh. this. This is I, I'm not not fitting in those. I didn't realize that that was a result of what I had experienced even at 12 years old. So that was that would be the first. And when I really, really realized that this thing happened to me, God says something different. And so now I have to do something different to really like get rid of that old baggage. Wow. So can you talk a little bit about how you went from that space of, oh, wow, I recognize that my mindset is because of, you know, an incident or a few incidences that have led me here. How did you feel or what was it that you started to doing on a practical level for yourself to get yourself to the point that you are now to coach other women mm -hmm. to go on that journey too? Like, what was that for you? And how long was that? Yeah. So, I mean, it was a really long time because I mean, one, I didn't recognize, I didn't know that I was experiencing this and I didn't know that I was holding myself back or even allowing that situation to hold me back in a lot of areas. Like I said, my, my teen years, high school years, even some years in college, it wasn't really until I got saved, um, say for real, for real, um, in um, college, which it was between my junior and senior year in college. And I had some amazing people that were around me and them not even knowing, you know, the things that I had experienced, even, you know, as a young girl and things like that. But they began to, um, educate me and to help me to grow. And I remember friends giving me things like the I am scripture. So I don't know if anybody else are familiar with I am scriptures. If not, you can Google them, Google I am scripture. And it's just like a list of things that God, God and the Bible says about you. Like I am more than a conqueror. I am an overcomer by the blood of the lamb and the word of my testimony. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Like I am a royal priesthood. You know, I am the head and not the tail. And not even realizing as I'm confessing these things and as I'm like growing in the Lord and, and growing in my relationship with him, then that's when he began to show me, even as I'm kind of seeking him about this whole, like this whole health thing. Right. Um, because I, I was an athlete in an athlete in air quotes, right. I wasn't the greatest because of some, you know, there was some other issues even there, like, you know, fear, failure and things that God again had to unpack all of those different things. Um, but as I just continue to grow closer towards him and continue to, you know, spend time in his word and confess these things over my life, he began to reveal just certain things to me that I needed to um, deal, deal with. And now that's helping me to help other women to say like, hey, there might be some things that we just need to unpack and we need to deal with. So to answer your question in short, it took a number of years and it really took like um, me, like for real getting serious about my relationship with Christ and understanding what the Bible and what his word said about me. Wow. And did that journey that you went that, I mean, it was an intentional journey once you once it really clicked what was going on for you, mm -hmm. did you see a physical transformation as you did that? Mm -hmm. And how did, if you did, how did that affect your journey? Or was that secondary now because you were more so trying to run after Christ and not mm -hmm. focus maybe so much on your body? Like what, what was that? Yeah. 
So it was kind of unintentional, right? Um, it, it, it started a place where I began to allow God to speak to me and like listen to the promptings of, you know, the Holy Spirit. So as he's beginning to unpack these things and show me these things, I began to seek out things that I didn't know even correlation to like, you know, fast forward. Now I'll be doing what I'm doing, but I'll give you an example. So I had roommates and while I was eating, you know, lots of processed food, my budget gourmet meals or my, you know, like quick things that come, you know, pop in the microwave. They were eating whole foods and, you know, literally like even the grocery store, like whole foods and things like that. And so I began to look around and like, wait a minute, like maybe I should consider something different, you know, about my body. And so God began to convict me and I began to change um, my my habits and I began to change like the things that I thought um, were quote unquote good or and began to see things that were better. Um, I started like to be more active, right? I was like, okay, in high school, you did, you did play sports, whether you were good or not, which you weren't really that good, but you know, you did, you were active. It's like, so now you can get back at, active. And then I, so I started doing that. I was like, you know what? I need to take care of my temple. I distinctly remember this conversation we were having at church at a praise and worship meeting, our team, we were talking about like the end times and and things like that. And what if stuff happened and like people were chasing us and we had to run. And I literally thought in my mind, if I had to run because of somebody was chasing me, like, could I run or would I be out of breath or, and it may seem so silly, but again, the Holy Spirit began to convict me and just begin to bring, started bringing these things up. Like, okay, you should like not take these things for granted and you need to start moving. And so I did. And I started getting more active. I started like rollerblading and, um, you know, I would spend time at the, at the beach, you know, rollerblade to the beach and spend time with the Lord there. And so I started doing things which I didn't know that we're going to relate to kind of even where I am now and what I would be doing now. But I did, I began, the Holy Spirit began revealing things to me about why this was important for me specifically. And then the transformation started coming like after that. And then I began to be a little bit more intentional, but it really was just listening to the promptings of the Holy Spirit and just like kind of everyday things, everyday things. And then fast forward, um, someone who I met at a networking event um, while I was working at the bank, um, she worked for Nike and Nike, where I live, they were trying to promote more health and wellness among women because we know like traditionally athletes have been more male, more male dominated, right? You know, women started coming up in sports much later than, you know, men. And so they were trying to promote um, wellness in our community among, you know, women. And so she told me about these classes. And again, I had all of the excuses, all of the fears, all of the things that, you know, and I talk about this a little bit in my book, but it's like, what if you don't, what if you can't do it anymore? Like you're not in high school no more. These ain't no basketball days. Like what if you can't finish the exercise? What if you're everybody in there is smaller than you? You know, this is what if you're the only black person? I mean, it was like all kinds of things that just, again, try to come back. And that's that's a good point because things will try to come back. Even when you've overcome these things, you know, if, if you have to keep renewing your mind all the time and keep making a decision all the time, this is not just like a one and done kind of thing. The enemy will try to come with whatever. And so he gave me all of the excuses in order not to go to that class but I pushed through every last one of them. I was like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do this. I got to the door and I was like, I'm going to go in. And I finished the class and I loved it. And I was like, man, you just unleashed the, you know, the inner athlete in me like all over again. Like, uh, thank you for that. I told my friend that we, I joked with her about that, but it's like, there will still be things that try to come up even when you're being intentional about this. And so the same way that we are with salvation, like this is the direction that we're going in. We have to be like that with our health and wellness. Like this is the direction that we're going in. It has to be like non-negotiable, no matter how ugly it may look along the way, no matter how imperfect it may look along the way, the same way our relationship is with Christ. You know, we have some bumps, some bruises, some war wounds, some boo-boos, you know, we fall, we get back up. 
it's the same thing. And so again, it was kind of just listening to those promptings, but then I began to get a little bit more intentional, especially as I began to dig in the word more. And I saw like how we were going to be accountable to the word for what we did with our bodies. Yeah. So. Wow. And that, that is just so, that is so amazing that God kind of took you on the shift of something's wrong with me physically and turned it into, well, let, let's work with you internally first and just started convicting mm-hmm. you about internal things. And it kind of just manifested itself outwardly eventually, but it's, He's yeah. so good at that because like, scripture always talks about how we look at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart and his way is mm-hmm. so much better because there's so many people out there right now, which is why I also like what you're doing that are, they are the most fit person in the room and their spirit is shattered. You know, mm-hmm. it's like you put in all this work and you're still not whole. And it's, Mm -hmm. it's not hitting where it needs to. It's not getting to the root. And so God likes to go inside. He's like, let me get to the actual heart of the matter. And Mm -hmm. you'll eventually, it's going to just show up and people are going to notice, right? Like people are really going to, they're going to take notice in a different way than they would have noticed you just being physically fit. You know, Mm -hmm. it's going to be a deeper sense of, awareness that people will have about you it's like you're not just strong you're glowing (laughs) it's like you know so it's like how how was that for you did people start being like you're april something's going on here like i'm feeling something girl you are vibing now like i just oh girl cannot rub that off on me like you know like how did did people start to speak up about that or just go there's something different about you can you like tell me what are, what's going on in your life you just seem brighter or you seem more out there you seem like you're oh wow it up, you i know? hope that was going on like man i don't remember no so it's so it's, it's funny that you say that because you're right you can be the most like whatever but it's like and you can fool people on the outside so whether people said that in the end or not you go back home and what are you dealing with right what are you feeling with you know in those times where it's like the crowds are not there and that's the place that we um need to allow christ to really come in and like you said do that inner work because man will judge the outward appearance because that's all that man sees but what about when you're at home and you're alone you know are you depressed are you still like trying to you know get love in in the wrong places and really feel that void that only really christ can feel Mm -hmm. but I, I will say, I didn't think about that intention. I didn't think about that a lot when you say that. And it's really funny because I have always pretty much had a, a strong you know, personality. Um, and so when people that maybe didn't know me like growing up, because there's been different seasons in my life. And so, and different, you know, obviously different um, groups of, you know, people, associates and things like that. And so people have just, have just really always thought that I was a confident person, but I would, I would hear people say things like, and I don't really like this word, but you're right. I would hear people say things like, you know, um, you're strong or, you know, well, you're skinny or, you know, things like that. And it struck me differently because I never thought of myself, quote unquote, being skinny because of what this little boy said to me when I was like, you know, 12 years old. And so when I heard things like that, it did strike me in a different way. So I knew that like something was different, whether or not it was just me aligning my thoughts and what God has said about me with what people were speaking, because people even back then could have said, oh, you're skinny. And it it may not have had the same effect because I still had the baggage of what I thought of myself back then. And so when I hear it now, I can hear it through a different lens of not like this title thing, but I hear it as in like what God says about me, no matter if you say that I'm skinny or I'm like, whatever the thing is. But I I, I did begin to see some, some things that changed that came out of me like, wow, okay, like, Laura, you are doing the work. Like if I was in a class and like I said, somebody was like, like, wow, you know, you're strong or, you know, you, but you work out or like, or you look athletic or, you know, different things like that, which I had never seen 
myself before, I began to say, okay, God, I can see that you are doing something in me. Like there is a shift and there is a change. So I didn't think about it consciously at first, but you're right. There are some times where people have said certain things and I would just like kind of sit back and like, huh. It's like when Mary, you know, pondered these things, you know, and mm-hmm. all of these things that Jesus was doing, right? Just like the Bible says, you know, Mary sent back, she pondered these things in her heart. So yeah. I, I do sometimes just kind of sit back and like, huh. Okay, God. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And it's not, it's not that you feel prideful. It's like a, that's so mm. cool. You know, you just kind of just like, wow, God, I, all- I see you. I yes. see what you did there. Mm, yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's so refreshing. Mm-hmm. And now, I mean, oh, geez, like yes. now you have this whole, I mean, it's, it's like your ministry, you're stepping into your purpose and mm-hmm. you want to impact specifically Christian women, but have you encountered women who maybe aren't followers of Christ who are drawn by what you do and want to learn from you? How do you, how do you speak to both types of women that are just like, I sense that you have this, this call that you, you want to see me be holistically fit. And I, I don't know about the faith piece about it, but like, I'm drawn to this message. How do you, how do you cater to these women that just want to be transformed Yeah, so that's a really good question. And I do get people asking me that all the time. Like, if I'm not a a Christian, like, can I work with you? And I've had some non-Christian women work with me. However, I'm like, you absolutely can. I mean, this is like open for all. But this is the framework that I'm coming from. And so really, um, until you really embrace that these like other things that are really the underlying issues, it's like the root stuff, right? If you never really deal with that root stuff, it's not really going to bear fruit, at least not long term. And it makes me think about the analogy of Jesus and the fruit tree, right? He cursed it because, you know, all of it wasn't like bearing fruits, even though it looked like it was and things like that. So it's like you absolutely can. But until you deal with these other things and whether or not, um, I mean, we call them confessions and you call them affirmations or like things like that. I'm just coming at it from a very, very vocal and passionate way that it is the word of God that change us. The Bible says that the word of God is alive and it's operative and it's powerful and it's sharper than a two-edged sword. And that's what I am using. Like there are scriptures that we go through. There are like mindset exercises that we go through. Again, our identity in the word in my program. So if you are not comfortable with that, it may not be a click. I mean, I can tell you the things to do to eat right, a clean diet, I can tell you the things to do in order to exercise and to cleanse and like all of those things. But if we're not going to be in alignment that this other piece is necessary, it might be a little bit of a struggle and you may not get the most benefit out of me as your coach. So I'll work with whoever, but I'm like, if it's going to annoy you or bother you that, you know, I'm going to be like, go in the script, go in God's word. Like, what does he say? Let's get some identity scriptures on this. Let's hit this thing. If it's going to bother you or annoy you that I'm talking about, we're going to be, this is the worship song that we're going to be focusing on this week, or if we're working out to worship music or, you know, whatever. So I I welcome anybody, but I just want to let everybody know that this is the direction that I'm coming from. And this is the, this is, this is what I got. So it's hard for me to kind of like tame that down because I know that that's the most important piece. I know that that's what we are missing. That is the, that's like salvation. And I don't see what I'm doing that much different than salvation because it's like when we give our life to Christ, it's holistic. It's like everything. And but sometimes we as in the body of Christ, which is who I believe he's called me to help. And I know I'm not hating on businesses that, you know, have, you know, old covert messages and things like that. God has called some to do that in every, you know, 
piece of the body, their joint supplies, right? But we as the body of Christ kind of in general, we are just taking salvation to mean this just one track thing, right? So salvation, there's so much that is encompassing salvation. It's healing, it's deliverance, it's joy, it's peace, it's, you know, all of these different things, prosperity, it's all of these different things, but we get the healing piece, we just don't get the proactive piece. So what does the scripture say? So we'll stand on a prosperity scripture to say, what is it, third John, second John, whatever, I wish above all that I may prosper, Lord, you want me to prosper, 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 but it also says in that scripture, and be in health. And so we've taken bits and pieces of the salvation message Hmm. and we haven't applied it to our health and our wellness. And that's where I believe my voice is coming louder in the body of Christ to say, hey, Christians, we know God's word. We say we know it. We say we believe it, but we're not doing it because if the Bible says that we are the temple of God and we've been bought with a price and we are not our own, Hmm. We're treating ourselves, we, we acting like we are. We acting like we are. And I'm saying here like, hey, 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 hey. That's like not what the Bible says. So you're going to pick and choose which scriptures you want to listen to and which ones you don't. Right. right. So yes, anybody can work with me. I would love to work with anybody. I would love to work with everybody. I would love to help anybody that I can. But this is the way, the aspect that I'm coming from. Okay, guys, in case you need a translation for this, what she basically said was, you can work with me, but Jesus is our coach today. Okay. <laughs> Jesus Just is the coach. That. He's the head coach. He's the right. head coach. He's the head coach. He's the head coach. And I got to yield to him. There you go. I, yes, I am not in control. There you I'm, go. I'm, I'm not the boss. Girl. I love your ministry. See, now I need to read your book. I need to read your book. This is the secret. I need to read it. I'm going to get it. I'm so excited because I, okay, literally this morning, I woke up, I did my morning devotional and everything. And then I actually decided that I was going to just go for a one mile jog. Now, The only reason why I even thought to do that today was because I have a friend that I grew up with since childhood and she's becoming a, I guess, a fitness influencer, but for moms, for stay at home Mm -hmm. moms. And she's a pastor's Mm -hmm. wife. Mm -hmm. She has two boys and she's dealt with her own body image. She's dealt with people saying, you know, pastor's wives shouldn't be doing this and that and stuff. And so she was just wanting to show up for her kids and Mm -hmm. first it was about losing the weight and now it's about what God is doing in her and in the journey of getting a fitness coach she ended up becoming a fitness coach Mm -hmm. and was invited onto the team of these women who are empowering other women to show up for their families and for their kids and for Christ and things like that and so she just posted I think yesterday or two days ago, how she has been working out during quarantine and she started coaching other women and feeling empowered and she hasn't run in a really long time. And she ran a mile and the time it took her to run that mile after having not run in a really long time was her previous fastest weight that she had to work towards and she Mm -hmm. thought she would be starting over right she Mm -hmm. thought I haven't run in so long I'm probably just gonna be back at my 18 minute mile whatever and then she goes what I did a 13 minute mile I even beat my Mm -hmm. fastest time from before and Mm -hmm. all I've been doing is waking up getting into the word and God is fueling me to just show up every day and it's transforming me in ways I wasn't going into this trying to be transformed. And so I decided today, cause I used to go running sometimes. I'm, I wasn't good at it. I wasn't trying to run any marathons or anything, but I okay. liked to try to run and I enjoyed it. Cause a lot of that time was my worship time and I would play worship music. I would just sing and it would just get me pumped for the day. So I just got up this morning 
And I said, I'm putting on my workout clothes and I am just going to run and I'm going to try. That's all I'm doing today. I just want to try. I kid you not. I got to a quarter of a mile and I thought I was going to die. I I literally, I was like, I don't remember it being this hard. (laughs) I don't remember it being this hard. But then I called my mom on the, on the jog. And I said, mom, I need you to talk me through this this mile I need you to coach me through this mile and she just kept saying like Candace you are a powerhouse you are a warrior for the Lord you are a kingdom child he's you are you are a dragon slayer you can't you are unstoppable the Lord has this in you and literally I just kept going keep going mom keep going mom keep going my legs are giving out keep going and she talked me all the way to my to my mile and I just broke down in tears at my front door at the end and I was just like I don't even really care how long it took me to do that, but just being reminded of who I am in Christ and getting the fuel to just keep going. It was just so refreshing, you know, Mm -hmm. and being able to look back on the fact that I could do this mile, despite having spent the last, what, three years now battling with uterine fibroids and, you know, that changes how you can even breathe half the time, you know, and I I had to remind myself, your body's been through a lot since the last time you were running, you know, Mm -hmm. and so this, that was, that was a miracle, that was a blessing that just happened out there, and celebrate that, no, it might not be the half marathon that some of your friends are running out in these streets doing, but that was, that was your moment, and God spoke to you in that moment. And it was just so cool that in that moment, it wasn't about me trying to lose all this weight to get these abs that I really, really want. It it, it wasn't about that. It was just about pushing myself to be who God told me I am. And Mm. that's just a little moment. It was just 15 minutes of my day, 16 minutes of my day, but it was a reminder. And I think that's what you're, you're trying to draw out of people that you can, you can get fit. I, you can help them get fit. We can do the meal plans. We can go to the gym. We'll do the workouts. We'll do intermittent fasting. We can do keto. We can do whatever you want. We'll do that. But if you want the full transformative experience, you got to meet Jesus there. You got to meet Jesus. He totally changes it up. And it's so cool. It is so cool. And I just love that you're, you're really calling women towards that, especially those those of us that love Jesus, that you're helping us to transform our mindsets because we have struggles just like any other woman on the planet. So we need that. Even in that too, I mean, So I love that story for like so many reasons and on so many levels, because it's like one, first of all, you didn't give up. Okay. Second of all, but but you didn't. And I mean, that's weird. We're close in a bunch of different ways, but not giving up. That is the thing. The second thing I love about that is it wasn't easy. I can't promise you easy. And Jesus didn't promise easy. Mm. Again, our walk, our salvation walk is not easy. I can't promise you easy, but I can promise you that it's going to be worth it. So at the end of it, you were like, whoo, like, thank you, Jesus. You got through it. Right. So I love that. It wasn't easy, but you, you didn't stop. The other thing that I love about that is you recognize where you were. And then you pivoted, right? So you were like, oh my goodness, I think I'm about to fall out. But you said, I know that I need some encouragement here. So you put an accountability system in place, but then you began to allow your mother's encouragement. And when she was giving you the word in order to fuel you, you recognized where you were and you realized you needed some help, okay? So yeah. many of us, we don't do that. And I understand, I mean, working with me, coaching with me, it's not, it's not easy. It's not cheap. It's not a whole lot of things. But when you recognize that you need help, that you can't do it alone, mm. it is worth it. Yes. It is worth it. 
right? And then it's like you, the other thing that I love about that is like, you're not comparing yourself to like anybody else. Like you said, your friends might be out there. They might be doing marathons or what. I got people doing marathons. I have no interest in doing a marathon. <laughs> Well, maybe like a little bit, like maybe, just maybe like a little bit. The 5K. Bit, right? I'll do the 5K. That's but, as far I mean, as I'm willing maybe to Maybe that, maybe what, I mean, I'll walk to the ends of the earth, but running is like not my, I, I've never loved running. So, I mean, but again, even some, doing something that you don't love do is sometimes what we have to do, mm. right? So I mean, it's just is, it just is what it is. If we're talking about a goal and if we're trying to get to a result, I mean, I had a coach that would tell me, you got to embrace the suck, embrace, <laughs> embrace the suck. Yeah. And I mean, I changed that around. So embrace the suck for the success, right? Okay. And you like, you get to the end of it, right? And again, it may not be, you know, pretty. It may not be like any of those, those things. It's like, but you don't stop again. Because of salvation, when we got saved, we didn't say like, okay, well, no, I'm going to have to go back over here and like keep on sinning. I mean, the Bible talks to us about what that is to him who sin and know is sin. It's like, we don't do that. So we can't do that in our health and our wellness. We can't be like, oh, I'm just going to do this for a little while. And then when it gets hard, I'm going to stop. No, we can't do this. This is a lifestyle. It has to be the path that we are going on. And so I love what your your friend did, was doing and like all of that, because I actually work again. I work with high achieving women. I work with CEOs and you know entrepreneurs and, and even first ladies and things like that. And I was on a coaching call with one just for, on Friday. And I said, you know what? People are watching you. Mm. People are watching you. So like you said, she wanted to show up for her kids. Leaving a legacy is beyond just leaving money. My what life. are they watching you? What are the kids seeing? Mm -hmm. And it's not about, okay, mom is on a diet again. I hate that. I hate that. Oh, you have to cook this meal over here for this, them, and you cook this meal over here for them. If you're changing up the way that you eat because you know that it's fueling your body and it's good for you, why do you continue to make a second meal over here that's junk for them? Right. You may not get the, they may not get the immediate consequence right there, but if you keep doing that to your body, then there is going to be a lasting effect. And that's why we are struggling so much in the church and we're on blood pressure medicine and we're pre-diabetic and Ooh. we're on cholesterol pills, just like the world. Yeah. And just like it, it's, even in black and brown communities. And it's like, we have to stop this. We have to stop thinking that we're going to go on this restriction for a little bit. Yeah. And then we're going to go back the way that we do. I mean, I just, I just did a summit last Saturday, I think. And it's like, I give this example all the time, like the children of Israel, they were asking God to deliver them, deliver them out of the hand of Egypt, like out of Pharaoh, like, you know, Moses, like, let my people go. They like, look, please deliver us. God delivered us, he did, deliver them, he did all of the miracles. They got out in the wilderness and they're like, Moses, you're trying to kill us. It was better in Egypt. We want to go back. No. Seriously, <laughs> Seriously. you were a slave. Right. No, you're a slave to your flesh. You're a slave to the things that you're eating. And you Ooh. say you want to go back to that after you've gone on this diet for 30, 60, whatever days? You want to go back to Egypt. That was not better for you. The banana pudding, the chocolate cake, that, that was not better for you. And now, again, y'all, hear me. Candace audience, hear me. I'm not trying to be legalistic and saying I will never eat another piece of chocolate cake, another donut or whatever. But again, my lifestyle and the direction that I'm going in is now this because I value myself. I value my temple. And I am thinking about me standing before God and what I do to my body because the word says to present your body to him as a living sacrifice holy yep. pleasing and acceptable yep. and in one version it said which is your reasonable act of worship so it's like mm -hmm. what are you doing to your body what are you doing to the temple again as we talked about in first Corinthians 6 19 20 that don't even belong to you anyway yes yep. what are you doing to it yes yeah you will have to give an account we will yeah. all have to give an account. Mm. My Lord. We will. Lord. I mean, it's like, how would you like for somebody to borrow your car and bring it back with dents, 
it's done been hit. It's got like food in the back. You know, it's like, it's the interior like torn up. You would be like, what? Well, how are we presenting our temples to God? What are, when we get our glorified bodies, what we, it's going to be good then. But like, what are we doing with these right here? Yeah. As believers, what are we doing? When we preach the gospel mm. to others, what did Paul say? I buffet my body lest I myself become disqualified. Yeah. I'm out here preaching to other people. I'm telling people how good Jesus is. And I'm diabetic. I have to go <laughs> shoot up, you know, like, and again, y'all, I mean, hear my heart, hear my heart, hear my heart, because I believe in the laying on the hands. I believe in breaking curses. I think that there's things we have to do in the spirit, Amen. but there's things that we have to do in the natural. And I'm not trying to shame anybody. Um, I'm not trying to do any of that because I believe shame comes from the enemy, but yeah. I believe conviction comes from the Holy Spirit. That's and right. so God is convicting you right now to say like, hey, there needs to be a shift. There needs to be a change. That's what I want. Because again, we are supposed to be the light, right? The city set on a hill, right? The light of the world. Yeah. You know, we're supposed to be those things. The world should look at us like the jailer did, right? And say, hey, what must I do to be saved? Mm -hmm. And if your health and your wellness and your transformation could lead to somebody else's salvation, hey, to God be the glory. That's what we want. Yes. That's what we want. That's what it's all about. It's really all about like, getting people into the kingdom. And mm -hmm. I believe when we steward our temples and steward our bodies the way that we should, I believe God will get the glory. And I believe that there will be people that are brought into the kingdom because you have a story to tell them. No, it wasn't Jenny Craig that did this. <laughs> no, Weight Watchers did not do this. Right. But Jesus did. Yes. He helped me to renew my mind. Like, would you like to know Jesus? Yes. Yeah. So I'm just, I'm like, we yes. as the body of Christ, it is time. It is time. People are watching us. Our children are watching us. Um, yeah. Our communities are watching. Our neighbors, are, people are watching us. And what are we passing down to them is, especially as children. Mm -hmm. I had one client one time, she's like, well, you know, I want them to be able to make their own decisions. I'm like, you're their mother. You're responsible for them right now. You're helping them with the decisions that they make and that they will make the right decisions. It's not like, oh, mom is about to get healthy and then leave the rest of us behind. I don't want that for any of my clients. And so we talk about that. We talk about how to eventually incorporate and get the whole family on board. And it again, that's a process. I'm not saying that this is done overnight, but we didn't get into this place overnight so it's gonna take some work it's gonna take some time that's true and that's okay but as long as we know that this is the direction that we're going in and we're not trying to go back to Egypt and we're not trying to go back you know to to ba the Babylonians you know what I'm saying it's like later for that to think that that was better because that food was quote unquote good but it wasn't good for you if COVID taught us anything, is that our immune systems needed to be healthy. And I'm not saying the people that weren't healthy didn't get impacted by COVID. But if I hear another COVID pound or all of that, I'm like, if we were doing what we were supposed to be doing COVID or not, mm -hmm. our responsibility to Christ, we didn't get unsaved because of COVID. So right. why are we sitting on the couch eating all day because of COVID? Right. Yeah. So I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm right there with you. I'm I saying it where too. I, 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 I went all the way off. Like I'm I copy paste <laughs> what she said. I copy paste the whole thing. <laughs> I just copy paste that because I agree with that whole sermon <laughs> y'all just got. She just preached the whole word over the sake. I was like, oh, okay, okay. But I'm real it in. I'm a real it in. <laughs> You're, but I mean, a lot of what you said is just so. <sighs> it's so true. And I know even to kind of piggyback off of what you said, it's not, it's not just about, you know, short-term choices, but a lot of us, I, Hey, I'm, I'm part of this group too. There's habits that we have, we have in our lives and they've stemmed from childhood, from our teen years or, you know, young adulthood, 
things that we've just been doing either our whole lives or something tragic happened and now we've just started doing these things and it's affected our health and now we're over here trying to get healthy but we haven't hit those root those things things. Mm-hmm. those root things that are holding us together the, I mean this past let's see how long has it been now about a year and five months ish I have a transformation coach and just working with him we actually together because of the client I've been for him we've started doing habit stacking and so it's about you know I kept trying to convey to him I'm if you give me a fitness program when it comes to going to the gym working out doing this doing that I can do it. I've done it a million times, but I have these habits that get me to also yo-yo in between all those things. So it just Mm -hmm. either I get stagnant or I don't really go as far as I'm physically pumping myself to go, but I have all these habits around food that are just holding me back. Mm -hmm. And after talking about that for a year, we just said, well, then what are we doing talking about the, the product of where you are? when we can talk about the root cause, let's go to the root causes. Let's talk about those. And I'm just trying to change habits. And that for me has been transformative in my spiritual journey and realizing that that's the renewing of your mind piece. You know, you don't, you're being present in your life. A lot of us are living on autopilot and we're just going through life. We don't even realize that we've been doing all these things. And then the more we become attentive to our actual actions, we're going, whoa, wait a second. Do I do that? Do I really get up in the middle of the night and just like drive to Taco Bell and buy something and then eat it and then don't realize I ate it? Do I do that when I'm stressed? Oh my goodness. You know, these realizations, yeah. one of the biggest realizations for me last year in this renewing of my mind about how I want to show up for with the body God gave me was full, full, full transparency. Mm-hmm. The anxiety that I get, or I, I don't get it anymore, praise God, mm-hmm. but I would used to get driving because if I, I recognized that I had to drive on, I had to drive in the middle lanes until I absolutely needed to exit to go somewhere. Because if I drove anywhere close to the far right, my natural instinct, if I saw any signs for fast food, I would just get off. I wouldn't even think about it. I would just go, I would go buy something, I'd eat it. And then I wouldn't even realize I just did that. And once it became aware to me that I was doing that, I said, oh my goodness, just just to get me to practice not veering off, I told myself, why don't you just try driving in the middle until there's an exit you actually have to take? Mm. And it actually worked. I would have to pray going everywhere in my car and tell myself, mm. Lord, <laughs> I'm, I might just drive to Burger King today and I can feel it. I can feel it. My body is tingling driving past certain exits that I don't mm. have to go down. And I just want to go to my destination. And so I need you to keep me in this middle lane and make it difficult for me to, to drive over there. And now I can drive in any lane and I'm good. But that took me months. That was months of being intentional about, I don't want this to be my story. And I don't want it to be something I manifest for my kids. Cause like you said, I want to be an example of showing up for who God's called you to be every day, even if it's hard. And I want them to see how that looks. And I want, I want them to see their mom mess up every once in a while, but I also want them to see their mom get back up and show herself grace and speak to herself Mm -hmm. in kindness and address herself in a way that is empowering for them to go, Oh, I can do that too. So it's not about I mess up and I'm a failure. It's about, okay, I might've messed up, but what did I learn from this and how can God help me do better next time? And, mm-hmm. and now you feel empowered. You feel like you're just growing and you're mm-hmm. becoming a better version of yourself. You're showing up for yourself and you're showing up yes. for kingdom. It's yes. literally, it's, it's wild. Yes. The things that we're doing on the surface level 
and it's not even it's not even peeking at the the root cause we're trying Mm. hard a lot of us but it's not it's not getting there and that's that is what I hear from you and how you're using your your business, your ministry to remind people you can get to your fitness goals all day long, but if those root causes aren't there, they're gonna they're gonna sprout there the fruit that's been there the whole time that you don't actually like. They're gonna mm-hmm. come back. And we don't want that fruit. Yeah. Ugly head. Yeah. I love that because you are I mean you have to break those things, right? You have to break those things. And again, that's why I said there's things that definitely need to be done in the spirit, on the spiritual realm. And then there's things that need to be done like naturally too, like definitely practical things like you, but you're like, you know, I pray. And then you had a system in place to say, okay, this is what I did. And, And that's what God gave you. Right. But we have to know and recognize that, right? So we want to have to be aware and really in order to be aware, like ask the Holy Spirit, like mm-hmm. what's going on is, but if you're constantly listening, he's constantly speaking. The closer that we are to him, it's like the spirit wars against the flesh is what the Bible says. And the flesh, war, the flesh wars against the spirit and the two are contrary one to another. So they're constantly fighting. Your flesh is constantly fighting and saying, I want to do this. I want to do this. I want to eat this. I just want to lay in bed. Um, I want to, you know, whatever that thing is, right? But if you're, when your spirit is stronger than your flesh, it puts the flesh down. You tell your body, you tell your flesh that I'm going to do this. It doesn't mean that it's going to happen on that first time. It might be the 39th time. But it is about you saying, this is the direction we're going to go in. And like you said, standing on the word of God, praying, right? That's what it takes. I mean, Jesus even said that, and there's different levels because there's different strongholds. There's different things that we've dealt with. There's different timing and all that. Jesus says, some come out only by prayer and fasting. Some things we're going to break by prayer and fasting. Some things that will take us saying like no a number of times. So it just really depends upon what what that thing is, how strong the root is, and really like, what is the Holy Spirit saying? So I love that you got intentionally, you know, like we're going to pray through this thing and you, we keep doing it and we keep doing it and we keep doing it until it breaks. I think so many of us, we do it a couple of times and we're like, this doesn't work. And then we give in. But it's like, no, you have to keep going again, keep going and keep going and keep going because your breakthrough is on the other side. Mm -hmm. Your breakthrough is on the other side. Now, I don't know if that's going to be on the third time or I don't know if that's going to be on the 33rd time or I don't know if that's going to be on the 3000 time. Excuse me, but keep going. It will break. It will break. Right. It's like the, you know, in um. What, what's the scripture that we really love about, you know, writing the vision and making plain, but it yeah. said, though it tarry in Habakkuk, though it tarry, it will come, wait for it. It will come. God is promising that it will come. If you're giving this thing to him, if you're inviting him in on every aspect of your life, not just Sunday church, mm. then it will come. It yeah. will come, but you do have to do some work. You do absolutely have to do some work. And I love that, that you put in the work. You put in a system in place and you broke that thing. Mm-hmm. Man, I'm, yes. I'm excited about your ministry. Yes. I'm excited about the women you get to work with. And guys, look her up. I'm not kidding. <laughs> look her up. See what she's doing. If you just need encouragement, I feel encouraged right now. I feel so encouraged and I'm so thankful hey. that we have to talk. I really truly appreciate everything that you've shared today and I hope that everyone listening gets a piece of this and I know I know some of you guys that listen to this are not Christian I know several of you you guys have reached out to me and I hope that in listening to these stories from people and their experiences that you are drawn towards transformation that is lasting and for us we're gonna be honest the lasting that lasting transformation is with Jesus so you know please feel free to reach out to me how can they reach out to you if they want to reach out to you 
Yes, yes, yes. So um, thank you, Candace. Yes. I mean, again, you guys, I, 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 I'll talk to anybody. If you have can't tell anything right now, I am definitely a people person. I, I, I love people. So if you, you reach out to me, I will definitely um, respond. I will not shun anybody away because you are not a Christian. But I will tell you again that this is this is how I got to where I am. This is how I got the breakthrough that I got, and this is how I help my clients get the breakthrough that they have. So if you want to connect with me, I would love, 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 love that you can reach me um, almost anywhere on social media. So on Instagram, Kingdom Power Living, just like it says, Kingdom Power Living on Instagram, Kingdom Power Living on Facebook. You can find me there, Coach April. You will see that. On Twitter, it's Kingdom Power 777. And I also have a YouTube channel that is, um, it's a little bit dormant. I need to give it some love, but it does have some um, no videos out there, some quick like videos out there that you can, if you want to just get some encouragement or whatever. Um, and then if you would like to contact me directly um, outside of social media, you can email me at support at kingdompowerliving.com support at kingdompowerliving.com especially as Candace mentioned earlier if you are on a goal to lose weight this year if yes. you want to join the 2021 pound campaign the challenge to say I want to be one of the 200 women that God showed me that want to lose 10 or more pounds in 2021 email support at kingdompowerliving.com you don't have to be a part of any of my programs I'm just going to pray for you I'm going to encourage you and I want to see you succeed in 2021. Now, if you do want to work with me, I have a number of different programs that you can work with me on. And actually, I have one going on now, which is my four-week intensive, getting you ready for Mother's Day. Um, um, so yeah, so that's how you can reach me, support at kingdompowerliving.com. And then my website is kingdompowerliving.com. So everything is all at kingdompowerliving.com. If you don't walk away with anything else, Take that kingdompowerliving.com and you should find Coach April that way. Awesome, man. Thank you so much, girl. And thank you guys so much for listening to today's episode. And if you guys have any topics you want discussed in the future, I'm loving some of the questions you guys are sending for me. I will be getting to those. I'm doing them slowly, releasing those solo episodes of some of your questions. And I'm just really enjoying hearing what you guys are really pondering about in life. So keep them coming and we'll talk about them. Shoot me a DM. Everything is at First Bustle. So look up at First Bustle anywhere. You can do that. Or you can actually text me. Uh, my number is 859-800-3396. So feel free to shoot me a text. I personally will respond. No one else has that number except for me. So you'll hear from me. Reach out. I'd love to hear from you guys directly. And if you relate to anything that April has talked about, if you're curious about what she does, when I post on social media, please post your comments and I'll, we'll tag her. We'll talk about it. We'll have a conversation because this is, this is us supporting each other. We all want to be our better versions of ourselves in life. So this is not a solo journey. We're, we're a team. So definitely reach out to either of us or both of us. And we'd love to talk with you guys more about these topics. If you want to further support this podcast, you can always go to at or sorry, you can go to www.firstbossle.com and I have merch you can buy now. I have the Patreon. I have all sorts of ways to support. So feel free to do that. And obviously one of the best ways to support is by subscribing, rating, and leaving a review, sharing with other people, episodes that you liked, segments that you liked, and having conversations with people about what you're listening to. I think that's really been cool to hear how people have been opening up more conversations with different people just from listening to some of these stories. So keep them coming. Keep talking with people. Keep talking with me and my guests. We love hearing from you guys. And thank you so much for your support for everything. And otherwise, guys, you take care. Have a great Easter. And I hope you guys grow into loving yourselves holistically this year. And April I hope you get to help some of my listeners this year as well. I might be one of those 200 people. I'm just going to throw that out there, y'all. Hold me accountable. I might be one of those hashtag 2021 pound ladies out here, okay? So I might jump on this train with you. 
So hopefully we can get some more people on here. If you're really curious about this, guys, join this. It sounds like a really cool initiative. And it's not just about you losing weight, but it's about you transforming into the best version of yourself. So thanks again, April. And we'll talk soon and have a great day, guys. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.